There are moments when your destiny chooses you. There's moments when you live out things you've never planned. There are moments when you feel like you're living a dream, and then there are moments when you know this is way beyond me, it's God. That's what this church plan is all about. It's a Jesus movement. It's Jesus people doing Jesus things, and it's us stepping into all that God has planned. 
scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived all that God has planned for those who love him. And this is who we are. We are the church. We are a movement. We are what we've never imagined. We are going to do whatever it takes to help people discover and love who Jesus is. Whoever you think God is, whatever you are dreaming, come dream with us. Come build with us. Come be part of a movement, a generous movement, a people movement where you and me together can discover and love who Jesus is. Hey, what is up, UCC? So glad you're here. We are continuing in our series called 2021 Vision, where we are talking about the vision we have for this church, where we believe God is leading us. And today, we are gonna be unpacking one of our things that we believe is essential for us to achieve that, and that is this idea of growth, right? We think growing in our faith is central to us accomplishing all God wants to do in our lives and in our church, because here's the deal. Here's why this is important. Because if we aren't running forward and growing in our faith, we're gonna find ourselves, oh my God, <laughs> going backwards. All right, so that was a little cheesy, I'll admit. But I wanted you to see this idea and not forget it, that if we aren't running forward in our faith, we believe we will find ourselves moving backwards. And here's the deal, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Today we're going to be spending some time looking at uh, the letter this guy Paul wrote to a church in Ephesus and it's all about how to grow in our faith. And I think Paul is such an amazing and interesting character in our Bible. He's in the New Testament and he does not begin uh, his story as a Jesus follower. In fact, when we first meet Paul, Paul's focus is on killing Christians and ending the Jesus movement that's happening. He believes it's wrong, he's against it, and his life is devoted to hunting it down and stopping it. Well, now we find him and he's writing letters encouraging and supporting and pastoring these early churches. And so what happened in between is very clearly Paul had an encounter with Jesus. I love this because I think it's just Why do we believe our faith? Why do we believe this Jesus thing? Here's a guy whose life was radically transformed when he experienced Jesus. And we see it in Paul, that Paul, after his encounter with Jesus, he grew in it. He leaned into it to the point that he went from persecuting Christians to being imprisoned and eventually giving his life for his faith. That doesn't just happen. That happens when you are leaning in and intentionally growing. And so, like I said, we're going to be looking at his letter today to this church in Ephesus. And we're going to look specifically here at Ephesians 4.14. And here's what Paul says. He says, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So right off the bat, we see Paul making the same point I was trying to make on that treadmill, just without making a fool of himself. And that is that we need to be growing in our faith, right? If we're not moving forward, we're going to find ourselves being tossed about, kind of moving backwards. And here's the deal. We get this idea in our life that if you're not moving forward, you find yourselves backwards. I don't know if you can remember the last time you bought a new phone, but within like a week, that thing was old news. It's crazy. Every time you buy a new phone, they bring out the new one. They start to, Apple comes in, they speed clock your old one. They make it run slower. So you have to go update because the second you have what's new, there's something new. And all of a sudden what was new and what was new, what was there becomes old. Same thing. You buy a new truck, you buy that thing, drive that thing off the lot and it's already going down in value. It's already an old truck versus those newer ones. It's the same thing. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Last one, here's the deal. Over uh, quarantine, TikTok. 
even if you're not into TikTok right now, I'm willing to bet there was a chance over quarantine you downloaded that silly app, or maybe you didn't, privacy, yada, yada, I get it. But point being, on that app, there is a new trend, a new thing that everybody's doing, like every other day, every time you turn around, it's like, oh, here's the new challenge, here's the new thing. And I feel like if you aren't checking up on it all the time, you're like, wait a second, what are people doing now? It's because if you're not keeping up with it, if you're not moving forward, you end up behind, you end up backwards. And look, in our faith, the same thing can happen. If we're not running forward and growing in our faith, we find ourselves going backwards. And this might not be the case if life was stagnant, right? If, if life just kind of stood still around us, this might not be the case. We might be able to just rest. Instead of pressing forward, we could potentially just sit. But that's not the way our life works. Think about it. Every time you open up Facebook, people are telling you what you should think. Right, right now, it's like everybody's an expert on Afghanistan all of a sudden. People, people knew or people saw this coming or people are all of a sudden having all these opinions who yesterday had no clue about this stuff, but all of a sudden we're experts on it. Same thing um, with like uh, the coronavirus. Right? We've had a year where everybody you know is all of a sudden a medical expert. They're telling you this or that. Everybody's just a genius. They know everything. You're wrong. And they want you to know that they are right and you need to think their way. And that's just people we know. Think about all the companies that are investing millions and millions of dollars to control what you think about, right? I got one of those Google Homes and if I'm walking around my house talking about something, all of a sudden I open it up and I start getting ads for things. Tell me, oh, hey, you're moving pretty soon. Check out this nice thing for your new house. Oh, you want a new couch? Boom, couch, boom, couch. And all of a sudden they're making me try to think a certain way. We have so many things flying at us all the time from people, from companies that want you to think the way they want you to think. And everybody has an opinion about your opinion. But the second you try to peg them down, no, 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 you got it wrong, you don't understand, right? That's just the way things seem to go. Everybody is changing on a dime, but they're expecting you to keep up. And that's why I'm saying when it comes to our faith, if we're not pushing forward, if we're not growing in it, we'll find ourselves going backwards. And I've seen this happen in my life and in people I look up to. There's this band I grew up listening to. They're called Hawk Nelson. They were this like Christian punk fan. I thought they were so cool when I was a kid. And their lead singer all of a sudden comes out and says, you know what, like I just, I got more questions than I got answers and I don't understand these things. And he said, rather than leaning in and trying to understand them, he's walking away, he's no longer considering himself a Christian. What happened? Well, all of a sudden these things came up, there's questions, there's things he didn't understand. Instead of leaning in and trying to grow in them, he just stopped. He walked away. He stopped trying to grow and all of a sudden what we find is if we're not growing forward, we go backwards. Can I be honest with you? I went to Bible college and I, I was in a, a ministry program. People that went to school to learn about the Bible, to go into ministry. And of my classmates, I can count, I can name the people that are not just no longer in ministry, but no longer consider themselves Jesus followers. There's this big thing going on that's getting pushed online where people deconstruct their faith. They kind of start to pick apart what they believe and question what they, what they believe. And I think there's good to be found in asking hard questions in our faith. But what happens so often is I think people come up against those hard questions and instead of leaning in and pressing in and growing, we become discouraged and, and instead of growing in our faith, we just get swept backwards. And like I said, I've seen it happen and I'm sure you can think of people that were coming to church and that were excited and they were doing all the things and all of a sudden they were gone. And I think a lot of times if you trace it back, what happened is there was a moment where they stopped growing. And instead of moving forward, all of a sudden they found themselves flying backwards. And that's how there's people that can appear to be all in on faith that all of a sudden end up so far from it. And I'm not saying this in a judgmental way. I'm not saying this in a shame on them way. I'm saying this in a way that we need to have awareness that even people that seem to have their faith all together, even people that seem to be running forward, they too can find that place where faith, if you're not growing in it, you find yourself going backwards. And we need to take that seriously. Because here's the deal, it's one thing to say that, man, we have to grow, we have to mature, we have to move forward, but sometimes you're like, is it that big of a deal if I move backwards a little bit? Is it that big of a deal? And here's why I believe it is. is because when we aren't intentional about where we're going, we are not going to end up where we want to be. Now, that's not like really like rocket science, right? If you're not being intentional about where you're going, there's a low chance you're going to end up where you want to be in life. Right, but sometimes we just are like, you know what, so what if I just kind of go with cultures for a little bit? So what if I just kind of like take it easy and go with the flow? Who cares? 
what's going to happen is we're going to find ourselves in a place we don't want to be. Case in point, a couple weeks back, our church staff went on a staff retreat to, to spend time together, to pray over the church, to, to plan and put some intentional time into working on where God is leading Unite Community Church. And on this retreat, we were on a river. And so one day we decided to get out in that river and go kayaking, which is a ton of fun, right? It was a great river, really beautiful. It had a great current. It really kept you moving. You didn't have to work too hard, um, though there were some things that came up. And let me tell you, two of our friends, Becky Nemchek, Tracy Malloy, they're on staff here. Um, Becky oversees our, uh, our downriver location. She's our downriver pastor. And then uh, Tracy's our small groups director. And they decided to take a canoe. So they're out there, they're canoeing down the river and they were doing real good. They were, they were moving with that current. It kept them going. Every once in a while they get stuck, but they kept moving along and we were really impressed with them. But there was one point in the river where all of a sudden that current picked up. And they started really chugging along and it sent them around the corner. And as they came around that corner, Becky was sitting up front and she realized that they were headed directly for a low hanging tree. And that current was pulling them too hard. They, they had gotten so swept up in it. They could not get off the path they were on and it was going to throw them right into this thing. So Becky made the executive decision that she was going to try to duck quickly to avoid this tree, which I don't know if you've ever ducked quickly in a canoe, but they completely capsized, went underwater. They're, they're, uh, you know, they had like sweaters that went flying, their shoes, all their stuff ended up in the river. We got it all back, but point being, they saw that, man, when they kind of got caught up in that flow, when they couldn't be intentional about where they were going, they just ended up getting swept into something. And this is what happens in life. It feels easy enough to be going along. It feels easy enough to be flying around, but there are people that will tell you. There are people who will tell you the story that, man, the reason they're following Jesus right now is because they tried that and they got thrown into the tree. They tried just going with the flow. They tried doing what everybody else was doing. And you know where it left them? Capsized, broke, addicted, broken, alone. Right? There are people in their lives who will tell you, man, I, I was going that direction. And let me tell you where it brought me is I brought, it brought me to a point where I felt like I had no hope until I heard about Jesus and I've been going this way. Right? And so that's why, man, it might look funny sometimes to see somebody. Imagine somebody paddling up river. You're like, you're working hard. Don't you know how much easier it is to go backwards? Yes. But do you know what happens when you go backwards? You don't end up where you want to be. And I think that's the message Paul's talking about. We get thrown to and fro. We get battered around when we aren't intentionally growing. That's why he says we need to grow. So we're not thrown around. We're not battered. We're not pulled left and right by people's opinions and outside teachings, but that we can be rooted and pushing forward in faith in Jesus Christ. Like he wants to see us growing so we can do the amazing thing God has for us. But let me tell you, I want to kind of challenge you on this because there's something to be said about growing in our faith. It's an important thing. But this is more than self-help. This is more than just how to become a better person, how to get your finances together. I believe God has good advice on those things. But when we're reading this passage in Ephesians, Paul isn't just writing to one person. He's writing to a church. And so why do we need to grow? Yes, because if we're not moving forward, we're moving backwards. And when we're moving backwards, we might find ourselves somewhere we don't want to be. But it's not just about us. We need to grow because we need each other to grow. Catch what Paul says in that passage in Ephesians 4, 16. He said, For him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love. The whole body. Paul is not addressing just one person's self-help. He's talking to a community of believers. And he's saying we all need to grow. Catch this. We need each other to grow and we need each other to grow. Now that's like going to come down to punctuation, but here's what I mean by that. As a church, we all need to be growing. We are never going to be all that we're called to be if all of us aren't growing. We're not going to realize God's full potential and dream for our church if we aren't growing together. And on a personal level, I'm never going to grow to my full potential if you aren't growing with me. I need you for me to be growing and we need each other for us to be growing. There's something to be said about that. And man, think about this. We are a body. If there's part of us that's not growing, that's a problem, right? If all of a sudden you knew like your left hand just had a massive cut, was just hemorrhaging blood, you wouldn't be like, eh, I text with my right hand. It's fine. No, you'd go take care of that. You'd go and support that. You'd do what needed to be done so that that was taken care of, that your hand, your whole body could be well. 
And that's how we're called to see each other. We're, we need each other to be growing, to have each other's support, to have each other sometimes give us the hard truth, to have people that encourage us, right? It's a whole body. I don't grow, out, I don't grow without you and my growth and my growth alone isn't enough. We all need to be growing, right? And so as a body, we all need this, right? The, it says that, man, each ligament, each part growing is how we become mature in Christ, so that we can be all that God called us to be. Which brings me to this big thing. Paul wraps it up. Why do we need to grow? He says, as each part does its work. Why are we growing? What are we going towards? Why is this a big deal? Because we have work to do. Paul says each part of us has work to do. So we need each other to be growing so that individually we can do the work we're called to so that together, collectively, we can do the work God has called us to. And man, that's what we've been talking about. That's, man, that's why we had vision night on Thursday night so we could get together and talk about the work God is calling us to, where we see this church going. If you missed last week when Pastor Chris kicked off this message, he talked about this dream, this vision of a church where people from all different uh, aspects of faith can be growing and become more like Jesus. And out of that, we live in communities that are better places to live because we are here. That happens when we are growing in the work Jesus is calling us to do. It doesn't happen when we're stagnant. It doesn't happen when we're going backwards. It happens when we're pushing forward into our faith, growing, becoming more like Jesus. So we need to grow. We need to grow because, man, if we're not moving forward, we'll find ourselves moving backwards somewhere we don't want to be. We need to grow because it's not just about us, it's about us all together. We need each other to be growing so that we can do this work, so that we can realize this vision God has for us, that we can experience all that. And so practically, how do we do this? What does it look like? Because there's one thing for me to say, hey, you should be growing, and you're like, that's great, but what do I do? And I have, I have two ideas. They're not all inclusive. Um, I'm not a genius. Neither of these are going to be like, oh, wow, I never thought of that. But I think if we are thinking about these two things, they're going to help us to grow and develop in our faith. And the first one is this. When we're thinking about growth, growth requires daily consumption. Growth requires daily consumption. Here's what Hebrews 5, 12 to 14 says. It says, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. The author of Hebrews, he's writing to a group of Christ followers, and he's essentially saying, you're not growing. You're not becoming more like Jesus. You're still on these basic elementary things. Why? It's because you haven't been leaning in. It's because you haven't been spending time with them, right? It says you ought to be teachers, and instead you need these elementary truths over and over again. You're not grasping them. You're not spending time with them. One of the things we believe here at Unite Community Church is that you need to be having a daily encounter with God through prayer, through reflecting on the things we're reading in the Bible, through, um, man, just uh, times of worship and just thinking about God, connecting with God, reading our Bibles. These things, we need to be taking it in every single day so that we can grow and mature in our faith. It takes daily consumption. Let me tell you, when my son was born, he, uh, he was a C-section baby. He came out almost 10 pounds. I'm telling you, he was like nine and some change. Like it was, he was a big boy. I like remember the nurses weighing him and being like, oh wow, that's a big baby. And I was like, what in the world? Like, what are we going to do with this big boy? Well, pretty quickly, his weight actually dropped off. And as we were going to his doctor's appointments early on, which it feels like if you've had a, a kid before, it feels like every time you're going to the doctor's, like every time you turn around, there's another doctor's appointment for the first couple months. It's insane. And he was just like constantly small. He was in like very low percentiles on his weight. And they kept telling us, we need to keep an eye on this. We need to keep an eye on this. And, you know, my wife was, it was causing us a little bit of stress. My wife was nursing and we were just wondering, what are we going to do? Our son's not growing the way he should be. And it started to cause us some worry because we realized that a healthy baby should be growing. Well, let me tell you what happened. All of a sudden, this little dude um, really turned a corner. And you know what it was? He started eating solid food. This dude got to the point where he wasn't dependent on mom and a nurse. All of a sudden, he started eating food on his own. And now this dude's like a bottomless pit. He is just like... I call him dense. He don't look at me. You pick that baby up and you're like, okay, Judah, wow, you got like, you got some weight to you. And this is because he eats. This dude eats solid food. You cannot say the word cheese around my son. He knows it. Cheese, 
Chiefs, data, Chiefs, Chiefs. He knows where it is in the fridge. He knows how to get snacks. He'll find him climbing cabinets to get to the crackers. And all of a sudden, now he went from low percentile in his weight to he's like 80th, 90th percentile. He just flew up on his growth chart. Why? Because he switched from just nursing to eating solid food. And all of a sudden, this dude filled in. Right? But it's not just in babies. It's in adults, too. Think about this. Think about just like a jacked dude. You know what I'm talking about. Those guys that walk around and their arms are kind of like out. And it's not because they're trying to impress you. It's just like where their muscles sit. Clearly not me. Right, but think of that person. Big muscles, they got their workout plan, they got their fitness routine, they got their diet, right? Those guys don't look like that because they don't eat. They don't look like that because they're on this like really low calorie diet. No, you ever seen those things of protein powder? Those dudes are dumping protein powder and shakes, gulping raw eggs and stuff. I don't know. But point being, those guys got there because they were taking in lots of calories. In fact, they know that to just maintain that sort of body, to maintain that sort of muscle growth, they needed a lot of calories. And that's just to maintain, let alone grow. And so it's true for them that, man, if they're not consuming enough calories, they're never going to grow. It's not just one thing or the other. They need those calories so they can grow. But at the same time, it's more than just consumption. So we need daily consumption to grow. But those guys aren't big just because they ate lots of calories. Because trust me, I eat lots of calories and my arm's not getting bigger, but my pant size is. The difference is that growth, it's not just about consumption, it's important, but growth also requires action, right? In Hebrews, uh, the author talks about the fact that it's by constant use that they've grown in their faith and their understanding. It's by constant use, and constant use isn't like constant use of like turning the pages of your Bible. That's consumption, that's important, but then it's taking that and applying it. It's by living out our faith. Our faith can't just be something we're consuming and and learning and it's just head knowledge. No, there has to be an application, an outward living of it. And at first, that is going to be a little awkward. It might be hard. In fact, there's going to be times where we try to live our faith out and it doesn't go the way we planned. But let me tell you, when I was in college, I got really into longboarding, right? Think like skateboard, but then, this might surprise you, long. Bigger wheels made for going down hills. It's a ton of fun. And when I was in college, um, we used to have some hills we'd go down. My campus had hills. I'd ride along around campus. But there were some guys, and they would go downtown, and they would go down this parking garage. And I went down with them a few times, and there was an outer layer that would kind of incline and then go flat. So you'd kind of go fast and then kill speed, and then go fast and then kill speed. But there was also an inner loop in this parking garage that was inclined four stories straight down, and you would fly down this thing. And if you really wanted to be able to do it, if you really wanted to be able to go down this this incline and go down these bigger hills, you had to learn how to do something called sliding, where you'd be going on your board, and then you'd kind of throw it sideways, and your wheels would, would eat some of your speed. And it was kind of like an advanced technique. It was hard to do. And so, you know, I like went to the store and I bought some mechanic gloves and I put some counter tile samples from Home Depot on there. I got my knee pads. I got my helmet. And I went to a hill by my, by my, my college and I started trying it. And so I built up speed. I got flying down. I threw my board sideways just like I'd seen people do on YouTube. My, my wheels went and the board checked and I went flying off the board just shot off it, right? Landed on my hands and knees and skidded the weight out. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was horrifying. And if I had walked away, I never would have learned how to do it. But you know what I did? I picked the board back up. I climbed back up that hill and I did it again and again and again. And I got bruised. I got cut. I got scraped. I got beat and banged up. But eventually, I got to the point where I figured it out. I learned how to go down, throw my weight, eat some of that speed up so I could go hit that hill and keep going going down it. And then all of a sudden, once I learned that, a whole world of longboarding opened up to me. Hills that would have been too fast for me before. That parking garage that I never could have dreamed of going down that inner circle. All of a sudden, I had the skills, I had the confidence, I had the ability to go do something completely new. And the same thing applies to our faith. It's one, of them, it's one thing just to look out and say, like, man, I wish I could do those things. I wish I had more confidence. I wish I had more boldness. Well, you know what? You get that not just by wishing and dreaming, but by going out there and trying and doing. And it may start small, but here's what Jesus had to say about starting small. Luke 16 said, and he says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. 
Jesus is saying, start where you are. Be faithful where you are. Wherever God has placed you, whatever it is you know about him, be faithful doing that. And believe that he is going to lead you into bigger and better and greater because we believe God is always pulling us forward. Again, we're growing in our faith. We're pressing forward forward in it. And we need to be faithful in the small things so that God is going to be faithful and give us these big things. Because I don't know if you know this, but we have a big dream here at UCC. We believe that we are bigger than just ourselves, that we are going to be outside these walls. We believe that as a church, we are going to have a positive impact on our communities downriver, in Washtenaw, in Saline, in Ypsilanti, in Ann Arbor, in all of these communities where that we represent that this world will be better because we are there, that we will see lives change because of what Jesus is doing in and through Unite Community Church. And that happens with us being faithful, with us spending time with God, knowing Him, daily encounter with Him, having that constant consumption, and then going out and practicing it and living it through constant practice, like Hebrews says, is how we're going to experience the maturity in Jesus. And again, I believe good things are going to happen. I believe God is going to move here. Because let me tell you, I'm here at this church because I believe in it. I'm not here because I needed a job. I had a job. I had an easier job, if I'm being honest with you. But I believe this church is on the move, that God is doing something special here. And I am just humbled to be a part of it. I'm humbled that God is calling us to this. And so I'm leaning in. I'm encouraging you to lean in because when we do, we will see growth. We will see growth in our lives. And when we're growing in our faith, I believe we'll see this mission that God gives us coming to life. Paul kind of illustrates what it looks like when he's growing his prayer for us. And this is my prayer for us as a church, that we would experience the things Paul prays for. He says this in Colossians 1.9. He says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, talking to this group of uh, Jesus followers, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of life. Kingdom of light. Again, he's addressing this group of followers. He's saying, we're praying for you that you grow. You see, this is our prayer that as we grow, we would grow in more love, that we would grow more faith, that we would have more knowledge of God and his will for us, that we would understand how he calls us to respond to things, that we would have wisdom and understanding from the Spirit. That doesn't mean we're going to have all the answers, but it's going to mean that we start to just respond in the way that God would call us to, that we see things more like he does. He talks about bearing fruit in good works, that the world around us would see the results of what happens. Not when we're working for us, but when we're working for God, and ultimately that we would grow endurance and patience. Imagine this is what's happening. This is our prayer that we would grow so that we would experience these things. And when these things are happening in us individually, in us as a community, when we're growing, when we're pushing forward, we believe we will see this vision come to reality. That it won't just be something we're talking about on a screen or on a stage. It won't just be an idea, but it's something where we will see our communities looking different because of the power of Jesus in and through us. And I am excited to see this. And I want to encourage UCC, lean in, press in. Don't get swept backwards. Don't get complacent. Lean in and grow as we enter this season because God is doing a good thing. and we get to be a part of it. Can I pray for you? Dear Lord, I thank you so much. God, just for your love, for your your provision for us. God, the good things you're calling us to here, here at Unite Community Church. God, help us to trust you and to grow in you. God, help us to not become complacent and go backwards. God, but help us to continue to lean in. God, in hard moments where it feels hard to lean in, Lord, help us to have endurance. God, help us to surround each other so that we can grow together. God, not just as individuals, but as a community, Lord, help us to experience growth in our personal lives and in our church life. And Lord, help us to discover just the goodness of who you are. God, help others to discover who you are through us doing this. God, help us to show your love to our community. God, help the places we live in never look the same because we are intent on growing in you, Lord. Give us that endurance. Give us that energy. God, give us that vision as we trust and go in you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We ask for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I raise a hallelujah. 
in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief oh I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I'll raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me And I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated the king is alive. Oh. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah and I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah Fear you lost your hold on me Come on, sing it I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will Darkness, please.